All right. Um, let's see. With the recent announcement of the end of Bernie's campaign, it was written that he appealed to younger voters who came of age after 9-11 and subsequent war, the recession, crippling school debt, and now COVID, example of healthcare limitations in our current system. To them, capitalism failed and socialism has become more attractive. How can we convince others who, who, are, pers who are personally failed by capitalism or a sacrifice required of having capitalist society, that capitalism isn't bad image only by bad actors. It's not bad actors. It's nothing to do with capitalism. 9-11 was not caused by capitalism. I think that's pretty obvious. But more importantly, the financial crisis wasn't caused by capitalism. The financial crisis was caused by government regulation, government intervention, government distortion and perversion of markets. And I can't prove that to you here in five minutes. I have an eight hour, I think it's eight hour, course on the financial crisis where I go into nitty gritty financial detail on how everything that went wrong in the financial crisis is the fault of some government regulation, some government control, some government incentive. That is true of the Great Depression. That is true of the great inflation of the 1970s. All these economic crises were caused by government. And it's not hard to see once you dig into the details. So I encourage you, it's on YouTube, it's for free. Just put your Ron Brook financial crisis and you'll get, now that you're sitting at home with nothing to do, you can watch eight or listen to eight hours of me talking about the financial crisis. But Nobody out there has been betrayed by capitalism. They've been betrayed by the mixed economy. They've been betrayed by government. They've been betrayed by socialization of the healthcare system. They've been, you know, uh, we have socialized medicine in America. I, I know it's not popular to say this, but America, 70% of healthcare is socialized. Right? Medicare and Medicaid are socialized medicine for poor people and people who are over 65. And that's most of healthcare. But over, if you're over 65, you've got single pay universal healthcare. It already exists. This is why Democrats want Medicare for all because they want socialism for all. Right now we have socialism only for people over 65. That's not capitalism, <laughs> that's socialism. It's socialism for some. And I would argue that all the problems that exist in our healthcare system, all the problems that exist in our healthcare system are a consequence of Medicare, Medicaid, and state and federal regulation of our insurance companies and our hospitals. And of course, the FDA is regulation over our pharmaceutical industry. It's all regulations and controls. And again, to the extent that we are free, we are successful. To the extent that we're regulated, controlled, we fail. So... All these people were not, were not failed by crooks, exploiters, or cheaters. They were failed by, by politicians, by regulators, by presidents. You know, the, the, the biggest criminals of the financial crisis are Dodd, Senator Dodd, and Congressman Frank. And their punishment was that they got a bill called Dodd-Frank named after them that basically ups the regulation even beyond what it was before 2008. But remember that the housing, mortgage, and banking industries are the most regulated businesses in America, and they failed. That should raise some you know, question marks. Why are the most regulated businesses the ones that failed? Maybe it's the regulations that are the problem. Anyway, so I think the whole narrative the whole way we teach economic history, the whole way we tell stories about economics, the whole way we tell the story of the Great Depression, the whole way we tell the story of the Great Recession, the whole way we tell the story of American business is fundamentally false. It's one big lie. And I know I sound like a crazy radical, but I'm a radical. I'm not crazy. I'm actually telling you the truth. And, you know, I'll give you one simple illustration of this. In 1776, the United States was a third-rate colony. It was a third-rate colony. The British barely fought us. They were, much, they were busy with the real powers like the French and the Spanish. We were poor. By 1914, the United States 
was the richest country basically in the world, most powerful militarily and economically. How did that happen? How did that happen? How did we get so rich? Not because of natural resources, they're countries that have more than us. Not because of socialism, we had none. Not because of big government, government was tiny, like 80% smaller than it is today. What, what did it? Well, in my view, it was businessmen. It was Carnegie and Mellon and Rockefeller and JP Morgan. They built this country. They created the wealth. They built the industries. And what do we call them? What are they, how do we, when we teach them in high schools, what are they called? Robber barons. Robber barons. Now, I can't think of a great injustice. These people made this country. Nobody contributed more to America than Rockefeller. And yet he's considered a villain. By making oil cheap, he completely changed this country for the better. Much more than the impact Bill Gates had. Same with J.P. Morgan. Same with Carnegie. You go across the board. And yet we call them robber barons. That's the kind of history we've been taught. Nobody teaches the 19th century. Nobody teaches the greatness of capitalism and the greatness of businessmen. Because we're taught by people who've been trained by the left, by people who are anti-capitalism, whether left or right, because the right today, the right today is just as anti-capitalist as the left. So I don't want to be, I don't want you to think I'm just anti-left when I'm, I'm a equally anti pretty much everybody. Um, why do you think so many people oftentimes highly educated are drawn to socialism despite its historical dark past? Because it's the only system they can consider that is moral because it's consistent with their altruistic ethics. And the more educated you are, the more you try to live up to your ethical standards, at least in, in your mind. You don't do it in your life, but in your mind, you want to pretend to be virtuous. And the way to be virtuous is to advocate for socialism, because socialism is consistent with the morality of sacrifice, the morality of altruism. And, and, and to promote capitalism means you're a selfish SOB. And morally, they can't, they can't retain that. So it goes back to my old point in my talk. It's all about ethics. I like that LeBron James mentioned, Kurt Vonderbilt wrote a short story named Harrison Bergeron. That's a great story that gives an impactful view of how government tries to equate all people. Yeah, that's a brilliant story. And it's not science fiction. Sometime you'll invite me back to give a talk on inequality. And I'll tell you, I'll give you the example of the real case where government tries to equate everybody and what comes of that. A real story happened in the, in the last century, not that long ago. Um, okay. How what we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourronbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...